Masters. So just about set for the time honoured Herb Hedeman. Two whistles in the gun, and so it will be Pat Hagen who leads them from 130 metres as the back markers run their way past the Hall of Fame. So we've got three guys out in front. You can see the back markers. They'll just have to measure their efforts as Lachlan Hurd and Tom Thorpe chase up Alex Gruen, the Oxford Scholar. And as the leaders, the midfielders go down the back straight, Toby O'Brien's in the black and white. And here's our eight markers. So it's Pat Hagen wearing number 29, Brady Threefall, as we mentioned, the marathon runner, and then Ben Ludbrook out of Ballarat, the Victorian country 5,000 metre champion. So those three out in front, they can work together, Tamsin. Yep. See if they can hold off the ones behind them. They can, and Ben, ben Ludbrook is coached by Rod Griffin, um, who guided Stuart McSwain, our great distance runner for Australia, um, through his junior career. He's nicknamed the Snoop in the squad and um, has been having a great season over that 5,000 distance. So you can see the pack starting to form here, and this little group here coming around in the stripes. So we've got the green and white. That's Bailey Morell from Wesley. Been coached by Tim O'Shaughnessy for a couple of months. There's a couple of Wesley students in this, actually. And Tim spoke to him on the way up. He was at Beaufort having a pie as I spoke to him, and he was very confident about some of his charges. <laughs> It's a good place to stop for a pie, Beaufort, on the way up. But we've seen a bit of a move, a change in the lead. Um, Brady Treffle wasn't happy with where he was sitting, and he's gone to gone to the front. So it's Treffle who leads, followed by Hagen. Then we go back to Ben Ludbrook. They've got a gap of probably three or four metres. Back to Augustinus, who was ninth in the back marker, 1,600, and has won the restricted 1,500 here. But so these two leaders are looking pretty good as they come down. And the back markers, the red and white, the orange and white, starting to move pretty well. That's Riley Bryce. He won this event in 2019 off 95 metres. Same mark he's got here, coached by Mark Hipworth. And if there's a man that knows how to get the job done here at Central Park, it's Mark Hipworth. He's won events over just about every distance. <laughs> he's, um, he's a nice little runner, Riley Bryce. He couldn't run last year. He had a foot injury. So he'll be, he'll be really happy to be back here. And he's trying to catch on to those athletes. But I think it's a really smart move by Trevor out the front here pushing that pace um, because he's the athlete who knows that he doesn't have that sprint finish that some of those back markers will have and so they have to really work early um, hard early just to make the back markers panic a little bit so they put down more bickies than they want to spend early so brad kiddo who's been the best of the runners here in this event he's second in 2018 third in 2021 he won the beachside gift where he held off uh, stewie mcswain so he's just moved up in the blue or right. He just went past Mitch Langbourne in the in the blue and white, who's the 18-year-old also at Wesley College. There's Langbourne there just yep. on the back as they get the bell. He actually has moved to Wesley. He catches the 605 bus from Wallen to get to Wesley every morning. That's how committed he is. That's a journey. So as they go down the back for the final time, it's Treffle who leads. And he's got a big gap here. Finn Russell starting to move into his work as well in the grey and white. He'll see him coming around the corner, but it's Threffle who's still got the big lead here. He's got a massive gap. And O'Brien's really working hard. He's got himself into second there, Dave. Um, he's a 3,000 metre steeplechaser at Nationals. He was in the final. He finished in... Uh, in six there, I think. So he's the one who's starting to work hard to try and make up that gap. Well, it'd have to be a disaster for the man out in front not to hang on here. He comes into the straight. He's got a huge lead. So it's Brody Threffel, the 34-year-old. He was a marathon man in December. He's come to stall. And he's going to have something to talk about in his podcast for the next 12 months because he's won the Herb Hedeman. Brody Threffel it is. Finn Russell's going to get second. And it's a good run from the outmarker, Pat Hagen, who hangs on for third. Oh, what an effort. I apologise. It was Finn Russell, Andrew Russell's son from um, Carlton Football Club, who came home for the finish there for that second place. What a great run by Brady Threffle. The school teacher, he'll have some kids back there. Very, very proud of their teacher for that run. And you're right, he, he's still got some speed in his legs. He might be running great marathons, but can still run the mile out very well. Good podcast too, and they love their field and track teams. And well, they don't really talk about the field much on that podcast, but they do talk about running, all sorts of it. And they'll be talking about that win because it was a measured race. 
from the out mark, you've just got to bide your time and make sure you don't get too excited early. But he managed to shake off his fellow outmarkers and dash clear at the bell. He wasn't able to be challenged. It's exactly what you need to do in these races. If you ha do have the mark, you have to pull, apply that pressure early because you know that the talented athletes are in the, the colours at the back and they just need to make sure that they put the pressure on early and, and make sure that the back markers use all their bicky so they have nothing left to kick home with. So first sash, Richo, of our broadcast goes to Brody Threffle. It was a fantastic win and uh, he'll be able to talk about that on his podcast for the, as long as he wants. That's a feature on the podcast coming up, Brady, I reckon. Uh, what a great thrill for you and for your whole team to win here at Stall. Yeah, it is. I um, really respect this race and the history that it holds. And whenever you get a good opportunity to race here and a, a nice mark where you're going to be in the race, you've got to make the most of it. And, yeah, really pleased that I could come here and get the win today, Richo. And how did you get the freshness back into your legs after running so well in a Melbourne marathon? Uh, having a second child was the key there. So, yeah, my wife Carly gave birth to our daughter Olivia in December and four weeks off and then just building back the training and, uh, yeah, I think I got it right with that performance today. Yeah, that's right. Soft conditions, though. I think a lot of our distance runners are going to find it a little tough today. Yeah, I'm based in a Chukamoama and we've just got a grass athletics track and it's um, nowhere near as well looked after as this one, so this still felt like a dream compared to what I'm used to training on, so, yeah, no complaints from me. Give the podcast a big plug, quick. Yeah, the Inside Running podcast comes out weekly, um, so, yeah, I'll have some good stories for this week's show. Well done, buddy. Thanks, Richard. Bye.